My name is Michele. I'm a research assistant professor at Northeastern University. Um, and today I'll give a brief talk on uh, mainly three topics, uh, all uh, revolving around automating and uh, optimizing 5G systems. And primarily I'll touch on automation, I'll touch on the near real-time rig, and specifically how we use the OSC near real-time rig in our deployment, and on testing. Uh, just a, a very brief introduction. Uh, the institution where I'm from is called Northeastern University, uh, and specifically I work it at the Institute for the Wireless Internet of Things at the center that is called Open6G. Um, we're trying to develop, you know, we're a university, so we're trying to develop, of course, our research mission, uh, trying to develop proof of concept and research and development uh, around ORAN and open RAN topics. But we are also a NOTIC, so we are working on testing and integration, and we are uh, happy and supporting system integration efforts. Uh, the center is primarily organized around uh, four different pillars, which are supported by um, some of our sponsors, the uh, NTA Innovation Fund, Open6G, the Oran Alliance, NSF, and the Mastec Collaborative. So the first one is end-to-end uh, -end automation for testing, for deployment, and for integration. The second is AI. How can we use AI in our uh, networks and systems, and how can we use it to optimize uh, networks in a closed loop? And that's where I think the near-real-time rig uh, comes in. The, really, the closed loop uh, characteristic of the near-real-time rig are, uh, are very interesting for that. Uh, digital twins, uh, primarily to uh, have the platforms where we can test the closed loop automation and the closed loop control, uh, and energy efficiency. So we have uh, an effort that is trying to understand uh, basically uh, energy, uh, energy consumption of the different microservices that compose a uh, software-based run. Um, we're doing this with uh, the, 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 the funding entities that I was mentioning at the bottom, but also with uh, an industry consortium with um, different levels of partners from our strategic partners to the small businesses, uh, with, which are either spin-off of the institute or uh, small startups we work on every day. But let's close this introduction and let's get to, into the, the main topic for today, which is basically uh, what is the role of automation and what is the role of the near real-time rig within this kind of systems. So let's start from automation. You see, when also uh, in the previous two talks, we've seen many different components related to the run, uh, many different network functions. Uh, the infrastructure comes with many different components. Uh, you have your traditional compute, you have your accelerator cards, you have the radios, you have the network, and so on. All of this is uh, uh, basically an extremely complex system that needs some level of automation and orchestration to tie it together and basically uh, help us and help the network get deployed. So automation can be used to deploy the network itself, uh, for example, in a neutral host environment or uh, in general. Can be used to provide and deploy custom applications at the edge. Besides the run itself, you can also use it to support the edge, edge services and application, and also to support the AI and ML uh, that you use to uh, optimize your network. And finally, uh, you can use automation for testing, so to test uh, multi-vendor and to end networks, and to test interoperability across systems. Today, I'll focus primarily on the first of these uh, topics, so how can we use automation to deploy an end-to-end -end 5G network, which includes also a near real-time break. Uh, specifically, I'll describe this kind of uh, system, which we call X5GCT. It's an end-to-end -end automated solution that combines a, an edge data center, uh, which we implement in a sort of custom version of the uh, O-Cloud. It's basically a microservices cluster based on OpenShift with a set of uh, control and worker nodes uh, that also includes uh, specific NICs and specific uh, accelerator, primarily GPUs in the system. Uh, then we run on top of these virtualized workloads, so um, I'll focus primarily on two of them, the Open Air Interface uh, or OAI uh, CUDU and the uh, solution with OAI and the NVIDIA uh, physical layer, so NVIDIA Arc. And we deploy on the same infrastructure also the OSC uh, near real-time rig. 
we uh, leverage uh, uh, an SMO to implement a set of automation pipelines to basically manage and deploy this infrastructure. And this connects back through a frontal interface uh, to multiple cell sites. Here, they're, act they're represented outdoor, but they're primarily indoor cell sites, which are deployed in two buildings uh, across the lab, and also to testing equipment. So we can connect the same uh, automated stack to either a real RU or uh, testing equipment that runs in the lab. Uh, it, just to give you a sense of a use case that we develop with this kind of infrastructure, uh, the use case we presented uh, last year in, in this uh, IEEE TMC paper is how can we use the automation and the near real-time rig to optimize a neutral host environment? So a neutral host environment is when a third party owns the infrastructure and allows multiple tenants to deploy uh, their solution on top of this infrastructure and spectrum. And what we've been using is basically customizing this pipeline, this automation, and the XAP on the near real-time rig to uh, basically optimize the neutral host environment, uh, maximizing the resource utilization, satisfying the requests that the different tenants uh, introduce, avoiding conflicts, and avoiding interference. And all of this powered basically by a, uh, an automation, a set of automation pipelines and an optimization problem running in the, uh, the SMO or real-time rig and um, affecting the automation and the, the deployment on the network itself. So where is the overall uh, framework? Where is the use case? Uh, this slide shows the, uh, the infrastructure uh, where we deploy this kind of systems. Uh, so from your left, it's a multi-site deployment. So we have a couple of buildings where we have deployed these kind of networks, starting from a cluster that supports basically an OpenShift deployment and an NVIDIA Arc deployment. Um, as I was mentioning, we have a flexible uh, switching infrastructure that supports frontal and backhaul on the same infrastructure using VLANs and also supports timing. Uh, to this, we have multiple servers connected, basically supporting either uh, uh, the, the NVIDIA Arc solution. I'll talk a little bit about that in a moment. And also, uh, basically, open air, vanilla open air interface uh, solutions. Uh, and all of this is connected to, basically, as part of a cluster managed by OpenShift, uh, which is basically a set of control nodes uh, that provide a set of microservices. Uh, the two sites are connected through the, the campus network on a side-to-side -side VPN. Uh, and here we run a smaller version of the same cluster in, an, in another building. So both are, at the end, connected to some RUs, uh, primarily Foxconn, but we're also integrating other RUs as we speak, uh, which are deployed across the two, uh, the two buildings and some uh, testing equipment um, that we can use either to uh, basically replace the RU or, or use the real RU. So this is kind of the infrastructure on which we have built the automation and where we have deployed the near real-time rig that at the end of the day controls the CUDU and the, from, from ARC and also the, the OAI stack. To manage this, uh, we have built a set of pipelines and solutions uh, on OpenShift using different kind of frameworks and components. Uh, primarily uh, CICD uh, using Argo and Tecton uh, to basically uh, leverage our infrastructure as code. Uh, we have implemented solutions that allow us to have some resiliency and redundancy. So basically when specific workloads uh, terminate or crash, we can restart them automatically. And we have components that allow uh, automated builds uh, of the workloads that we want to run in our network. So basically providing a doc going from the Docker file to the service uh, completely deployed on the network. Um, just to elaborate a bit on the different pieces that compose this infrastructure, um, we start from uh, our kind of custom version of the SMO, which has the goal of monitoring and instantiating the edge data center infrastructure. Here we have two sets of compute solutions, the control plane nodes and the worker nodes. Control plane nodes host the OpenShift microservices, but we also use them to deploy Core Network, the near real-time rig, and some AI NML components. 
uh, while the worker nodes are primarily dedicated to run workloads so that we can guarantee uh, specific timelines for the uh, compute that we use. And all of these come with uh, specific GPU and NICs uh, that we need to support the, uh, the workloads. Versus registry, uh, where we basically pull the uh, different microservices from. And then we use three different uh, solutions, as I was mentioning. One is Argo CD, which allows us to basically synchronize a set of templates, configuration file, Docker files, and so on, to the different parts of the infrastructure where these need to be deployed. There are Tecton pipelines, which are pipelines that we basically specify to either run builds of the software or to orchestrate workloads. So for example, there, there, is a, there, is, there are pipelines that specify how to deploy a 5G base station using OpenAir interface or a 5G base station based on NVIDIA Arc. And then we heavily leverage the OpenShift operators to uh, you know, distribute the uh, PTP, the precision time protocol that is necessary to the uh, synchronization between the DU and the DRU. We use them to manage the accelerators, so the GPU, the NICs, and so on. Uh, con configure the overall infrastructure as if it, as if it were code. So this kind of gives you the high level overview of how we uh, use the different components all together. And we have um, used this infrastructure to automate, for example, the deployment of a, the NVIDIA ARC stack. So NVIDIA ARC is the combination of a physical layer accelerated on GPU uh, based on uh, the NVIDIA aerial uh, system and operator interface as layer two and layer three, um, and which are basically brought together um, um, in this NVIDIA ARC solution. What we did here specifically was uh, deploying this solution in a system uh, managed by OpenShift. So everything runs in a single pod. We have a third container, which is uh, an E2 termination. Uh, and all of these basically are uh, interconnected together through IPC directly on uh, share, pod, share memory specific to this pod. Uh, in addition to this, as I was mentioning, we use some operators to configure the actual hardware on which we need to run this system, so basically PTP, uh, networking, and GPU. So this allows us to deploy the NVIDIA Arc solution with a completely automated uh, pipeline. And it basically uh, makes it possible to click a button and deploy and start the run with a real RU and a, um, a software that is as close to a commercial solution as possible. Uh, yeah, we, we basically start the whole stack in about 40 seconds. Uh, if you see here, we have one component, which is the two termination. So part of the work that we did has been on uh, integrating the um, the overall stack with a near real-time rig deployed on OpenShift. Uh, specifically, we have these E2 uh, components that connect to the E2 termination of the OSC rig. So this is a vanilla OSC rig uh, deployed on uh, the OpenShift cluster, the near real-time rig, of course. Uh, and on top of this, we have developed some X apps to uh, either uh, expose telemetry and KPM. So this is a KPM XAP, uh, uh, an XAP that monitors key performance metrics out of, uh, the, uh, of the run and exposes them on an influx database. And then we have the usual Grafana uh, visualization. Uh, but I'll, I'll show you uh, something else in a moment. We've also been working on uh, not only collecting KPM, but also imp implementing control uh, of the run on top of uh, this uh, specific stack. Uh, yeah, and this is just a picture of uh, part of where we run this deployment with the RU uh, over here in the white circle, and then the some UE is deployed um, on the table. Uh, why, what, what do we do with this? We've been using this system to uh, develop a number of use cases. Um, from uh, testing um, security of this kind of solution to um, most of these are work in progress, for example, on interference mitigation, resource management, and so on. But something we have been, where we have been focusing is the basically how we can control networks in a closed-loop fashion. 
And about a month ago, uh, we have demonstrated at the RIC Forum in, uh, um, in Dallas a, a, an XAP that uh, is based on the E2SM CCC, so cell configuration and control, and can change the slicing configuration within the uh, OAI and NVIDIA aerial stack. So uh, basically, we have a, a setup like this, which is based on the, on the setup that I was showing you uh, earlier. So we have multiple UEs uh, distributed across two different slices. Uh, primarily, we have um, uh, some smartphones and a 5G modem from Sierra Wireless. They all connect to uh, the X5G base station with NVIDIA Arc and OAI. And then the two interface exposes the KPM to uh, an XAP. Uh, and then we have the, also the two interface supporting the control of the slice through the CCC uh, slicing configuration. The XAP itself that is running on the OSC near real time brick uh, is basically collecting telemetry. And then uh, for this specific demo, we were running a simple logic. So basically switching between uh, two different configuration for the two slices. And you can see it here on the dashboard. Uh, basically, here at the center, we, uh, we report the downlink throughput. And you can see that we have two lines, a, a yellow and a, um, a blue line that alternate. That's because we are changing in near real time the slice configuration and basically change the PRBs that each slice uh, gets uh, at every time. So uh, this was sort of a preliminary demo. We're working on basically building an intelligent version of this that takes some of the research that we have been doing on slicing for this kind of system based on deep reinforcement learning and applies it to this kind of um, more production ready and automated system. As I was mentioned in the beginning, so I've been uh, showing a little bit of automation, a little bit of OSC RIC. The third topic that I wanted to briefly touch on is testing. So we can also use all of this infrastructure to test new functionalities for uh, the networks that we deployed. And we've been basically using the same pipeline and the same CI CD infrastructure that we used to deploy the network also to test the network itself. Uh, for example, whenever some of our students or postdocs develop some new functionalities, we automatically uh, package it as a patch. And then at this point, we start a process where there is no human interaction required, but that goes through a set of steps, basically from building the new uh, image of the CU or DU that we want to test, to deploying this uh, over the air uh, in the, the system that I was showing earlier and running the test over the air, but also deploying it on a channel emulator, on a large scale emulator system that we run at Northeastern that is called Colosseum. So basically, we, we can do the same test in an emulated environment or in an over the air environment, collect our results, and understand if there is any uh, regression. If there is no regression, the test is passed. If there is a regression, the test is failed, and the uh, developer needs to go back and improve the, uh, the feature. Uh, so just to give you a sense, we've been running this since last July. So it's uh, almost nine months of tests. We run four tests a day on the latest um, weekly tag of Open Air Interface. Uh, and this is just a visualization basically from July to uh, March of the throughput, for free, throughput and packet loss for three different tests that we've been running and two different configuration of the kernel. Uh, that we were running on our stack. Again, just to give you a sense of how you can use automation and automated pipelines to kind of run this system. All right, this was my last slide. I'm acknowledging some of uh, the collaborators in the team. Uh, thanks, and I'll be around for questions.